Greetings, my name is Ben, aka Downsize It, and today I want to go over the um, new stuff we got out for Star Wars Armada Rapid Reinforcements 2. Uh, it definitely has caused quite a stir on all the forums and discords and stuff, and I have to be honest, I have not been able to keep up. <laughs> I haven't, uh, haven't had a chance to look at everybody's commentary and back and forth, but I do know there are questions regarding the cards and everything. I have questions myself, and uh, I'm just going to go through today each of the cards and uh, talk about them, my thoughts on them, and what I, and basically how I'm going to rule on them, on how they how they work until Atomic Mass Games comes out with official rulings, because that's something I need to do because of our local tournament that we do um, every month or every other month. It's been kind of like every mo other month this year, so I actually have one coming up a week. Uh, from this Saturday uh, for an Ozark Mountain Tournament Series event, so I need to make sure that uh, those that will be playing um, know what, how I plan on ruling on how these cards work. So that'll also be part of why I'm doing this video too, kind of an announcement for them, and just kind of to walk through my thoughts, etc. Now before we get started, I um, just want to remind everybody we're getting close to the end of this section of the giveaway. Um, for March and April, May the 1st is coming up. Don't forget to subscribe and comment to my March and April videos. That includes this one. And have a couple more bat reps coming out with Social General Rob. One will be dropping tomorrow, and then one more next week. Those will be the last two bat reps that will drop before the giveaway. So that'll just you have, have that in mind. And then Rob and I are going to be filming tomorrow a special bat rep that will be dropping on May the 4th. So you can look forward to it. It's going to be an 800 point bat rep, one of the big ones we like to do for a May the 4th special bat rep. So keep an eye out for that. I'm looking forward to playing that game. All right, so let's move on here. So first, Atomic Mass Games, you know, gives us rapid reinforcements. You know, you know I know people are upset and it, it is unfortunate that it's uh, just print and play only. They're not going to be releasing any cardboard. Um, that's what I expected. I wasn't expecting the release cardboard. But uh, at least we have something. And I, I will say it is very uh, across the board about effectiveness, usefulness, and balance <laughs> when it comes to the, uh, the updates. So let's start with uh, what I think is the least impactful to the most impactful. And unfortunately, the least would be the Separatists. Um, I feel like they got screwed over again. I don't know what's going on. At Atomic Mass Games, if they're just nobody there likes the Separatists, <laughs> but um, yeah, it, it's it's kind of rough. But let's start with the one that's the most rough, and that's Asajj Ventress. It's cool to have her in the game now. Don't get me wrong on that. Um, unfortunately, you know, let's just go over her ability real quick. We'll read it out. It should be popping up here if I'm doing this right. Uh, after you perform an attack. Targeting a ship that has one or more raid tokens. If the defender suffered one or more damage, you may remove one raid token and one command token from the defender. If you do, gain a matching command token. So, <clears throat> and four points. And, I mean, this is extraordinarily situational. Um, which just kind of stinks. That, I mean, and almost only useful with Dooku. I can't think of any other reason why we use it anywhere else. <clears throat> you definitely don't want to use it for TF Droid, because that would just completely screw over your entire game plan with him. Um, you could do any other commander with B2 Rocket Droids, but that's just this makes it difficult to get the timing right. I mean, Duke is really the only useful person to use her with. Um, yes, he's in the picture. You know, they work together in the Clone Wars. So, um, some interesting things. Uh, they it doesn't say it has to be the, a matching command token that you remove the raid token so you can remove her like a navigate raid and then take off like an engineering command token they might have sitting on there um, and you gain a matching command token uh, it says matching command token matching what matching the raid or matching the command token um, I think uh, so this is the way that I think this is going to be that I'm at least going to rule it how I think it works is that the raid and the command token that you remove from the ship don't have to match and then the command token you gain can be either or of the what you removed. Um, that's just going to be how I'm going to rule it until we get official confirmation. 
hopefully soon. Uh, just a quick aside. Uh, uh, it is, uh, I'm glad that he is on to bigger and better things, you know, but it kind of sucks that Karnak has left AMG as an independent contractor. We were very spoiled with him. Um, and, uh, you know, and just uh, for you, Derek, I know that you're not with them anymore. And just in an unofficial capacity, if you want to make your own personal rulings on how these cards work, um, just as a fan and as the rules guru that we've had for almost a decade now, um, I will take your word as law until AMG decides to make official um, clarifications. But anyway, that's just an aside. We love Derek. We love Karnak and what he's done. So anyway, the way I'm going to rule on this card is that the, the raid and command token don't have to be the same that you remove. And the command token that you get can match either the raid or the command token. Because I don't. it doesn't specify they have to be the same, what you remove. They don't have to be the same. Um, as far as usefulness, again so situational i mean if i'm ever using this the only reason i can imagine i would use this is to try to screw someone over and stop them from refreshing things like remove an engineering token so they can't refresh their uh, uh, uh ecm or they or, or remove a uh on straight fire so they can't refresh their spot e or something but again, the timing would have to be perfect because you'd have to make sure that there's no other way for your opponent to give himself a token before the end of the turn. Or the end of the round. So, it's just tough. Ugh, it's tough. I, I mean, and four points isn't a lot, but man, for this situation, I mean, I'd make it one point for crying out loud if you're going to do this kind of only happens in extreme circumstances and very specific commander to be worked with. But maybe some other people will get more creative. We'll see. But this is my least favorite update, unfortunately. Um, let's continue with the Separatists. Wat Tambor. Now, this one isn't terrible. Um, it's not great, but he's not actually not terrible. You know, I think um, every factory should have Escort. So now they have Escort. Um, and yes, he will die quickly. Uh, brace and an Evade. You know, the Evade's okay, not the greatest. And nothing special. The only thing, no, like, no special abilities. It's just that he has Escort. Um, what I find interesting, though, again, I know it's not great, but what could be interesting, how this would work if you want to do a squad-heavy build, is, as I was thinking about this, is have Wat Tambor surrounded by Vulture Droids, and then you have your um, Hyena Bombers going off the bomb while Wat Tambor and his Vulture Droids lock down enemy squads. The reason why that's important is because of screen. Screen hardly ever happens. Um, I, I, I rarely see anybody ever use the screen effect. Mainly because if I see it on the board, like if someone has, you know, a, a, a bell above or whatever, I just attack other things so that they don't even get the screen effect. Now this is forcing you to have to attack him first while he has screen. And what screen does, for those that don't really use it that much, is that if other friendly squadrons are um, engaged with the attacker, um, then you get dodge, up to dodge three. So if you surround Watt with vulture droids, send him into an enemy squad ball, the enemy can't attack those vulture droids until Watt's dead, and while it's doing that, you get dodge three every time he gets hit. If you can force your opponent for every attack that comes in at Watt, if you position it right, you have to reroll up to three dice. So that could also, plus an evade, reroll another one. That could really help with, um, keeping his survivability up. So I think that's, I think it's actually, it's not terrible. I think it's, it's actually could be some interesting squad gameplay mechanics there. So that one I kind of, I kind of find is interesting, but overall, unfortunately the Separatists got screwed over. <laughs> um, no Django. I mean, that seemed like an obvious one. Come on, let's get Django in here, but that's all right. Okay, moving on. Who do we want to do next? Let's do uh, the Rebels next. So General Draven. Now this one is interesting, so choose a command dials for this card before deploying fleets, it's just like Thrawn or um, Bale or uh, uh, who I'm thinking of, Trench, um, except unlike Bale, it's like similar to Trench and Thrawn where you, they're face down, your opponent doesn't know them. So at the start of each ship phase, you may reveal and discard one command dial from this card. If you do until the end of the round, when an enemy ship spends a, a matching command dial, it resolves that dial as though it spent a token of the same type instead. So, 28 points. 
Uh, this is another one where it's it's interesting. It's not terrible, but I don't think it's great. It's commanders where you screw with your opponent are very situational and sometimes tough to put off, pull off, like Dooku and also like Palpatine, <laughs> the most expensive commander in the game, and no one ever uses him because his ability is just kind of like eh. It's hard to make work properly to really affect your opponent. Draven, however, and I've seen people say he has very specific amusability, and I agree, but it could be very powerful. And since you get to choose, you know, um, after deploying fleets, you know what you're facing. So you could really screw somebody over that's a squadron base. And they, people are saying it, screw, it screws over Sloan. Yeah, it does. But anybody that runs squads. Um, Sloan isn't the only commander out there that runs squads. So if you see someone across the table that's running squads, boom. If you're going up against a uh, like a tanky fleet that plans on engineering a lot to keep itself alive, two rounds, boom, they only get the token, um, as opposed to the full dial plus token or whatever they're wanting to do. Um, same thing with con fire. You know, if someone has gunnery teams, or you know, or that sort of thing, it, it it's just. It's one of those where, again, it's not great, but it could situationally be very powerful depending on the opponent you face. I find it will be it'll be some interesting interactions going on between, um, like facing against Thrawn. I mean, I just like because this will be like, well, Thrawn would be a good counter to this. Trench would, and so would Bale. Um, but also, like the thing with Bale is that you get to see his dial. So if you have Draven, you can see what they gave their Bale dial. So it's like, you know, what? I don't want him to get all those engineerings. So I'm going to pay, make my Dow's engineering so that he won't be able to heal himself up for two rounds or whatever. So, not terrible, not great, but I think it could be interesting. I think there could be some interesting play to try to counter what your opponent wants to do. <clears throat> so for the squadron that uh, the Rebels got, Fen Rao, who is a Mandalorian and in a Mandalorian gauntlet fighter. And this one uh, does have assault. Um, so you still get to place raids, and um, has escort, which is nice. The ability, though, is the interesting one. When you are chosen to activate by a squadron command, after the activation is resolved, use up to two non-unique squadrons at distance one. The chosen squads may activate as if they were chosen by the squadron command. Now, one thing that I I did notice in my brief looking browsing of like forums discussions is people thinking this adds to your command activations. I don't think that's what that means. I think this is like a boosted, like a really extended relay effect because you can move four and then grab and then tag two squads that were even further away from activation range and let them activate. Because, and this is the reason why I, I could be ruling wrong on, on this, but this is the way I'm gonna rule it for our local tournaments until again, clarified otherwise or if there is a general consensus. But it says the squads may activate as if they are chosen by the squad by the squadron command, which means you're still limited by your squadron activations based on that command. So if Ben Rao is activated by a squadron one ship, or even just a like just a token only, there you have no squadron activations. So you're done. So you won't be able to do this effect. You need to have at least a squadron activation of three to make this useful. I don't. This is. I don't think this is giving you more activations per command. That's not worded like you know, say um, Wolf Ularn for the Rebels or uh, the Republic that specifically says it gives you additional activations. I don't think this is giving you additional activations. I think it's like an a, an extended like a different version of relay. This is how I think this works. I could be wrong. Let me know what y'all's thoughts are. But this is. This is the way I'm going to be ruling it for those that are watching that will be at our Ozark Mount Tournament Series event next week. This is the way I'm ruling this. It's not giving you additional activations. It's basically acting like in a, you get to activate two squads where Fen Rao is, regardless of where your actual ship was that did the commanding. So, I that's the way I think it's supposed to work. I hope I'm wrong. Because it could be cool to have you give yourself boosted act in like combining with Adar Talon and everything. It could really boost your ability to activate lots of squads in one activation, but I, that's not the way it's worded, and I don't think that's the way it's meant to, to work. So, but let me know if you're, I'm wrong or not. But 
that's the way I'm going to play it, and that's the way I'm going to rule it for um, my local tournaments that I'm running. Until, you know, I'm convinced otherwise. Okay, so that was the Rebels. Now, let's move on to the Republic. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> um, Anakin is great. We'll get to him in a second. But although I think Anakin... Uh, hey, we'll get to him in a second. Let's start with the, the with Matchstick, which I think is really interesting. Um, while you are, So it's a B, B, BTLBY wing. And while you are unengaged, friendly squadrons with bomber at distance one gain rogue. So this will work with other Y wings, and it will work with your arcs. Which, if you want to run basically like a rogue style um, squadron list, and Republic doesn't have rogue until now, and I think this could actually be very interesting. I've seen people say like just stick matchstick on a an asteroid or just any obstacle where he can't be engaged. And now everyone distance run gets rogue. But this is where people are asking, well, what if you move away? Do you lose rogue? Do you gain it? So this is one where, again, until clarification comes down, I think, and I was looking through the rules reference, just so I look at some definitions of how rogue works, the how how the actual squadron phase happens, you know, between activation and attack and all, move and all that stuff. So act, I think you do lose it if you get out of range. So activation ma order matters here. Um, I think the best way to work this, like, and I've seen people mention this, and this is the way, I, again, what I'm going to rule how it works is that you lose Rogue if you move out of distance one, or if you suddenly become engaged. So timing and activation order does matter here. So what you would want to do is, you know, move Matchstick up to do hit spawning run, because as long as he's unengaged, he has Rogue, because he's friendly to himself. It doesn't say another friendly squadron. He does his bombing run. Um... And, and needs to do it that way because he can't be engaged, so he's not with the squadron. And then all the other squads you want to go with him, you select them, they currently don't have row, they move, and then if they land at distance one of matchstick, they now have rogue, so now they can attack. Um, <clears throat> or you could do it the opposite way. If you're at a ship attacking, have them attack, then move away, and as soon as they move away, they lose rogue. So you don't want to move them and the try to attack because then they lose rogue. I think that's the way it works, unless this gets clarified. But as it's written now, and the way that squadron activations work, um, the rogue can be lost. Because, you know, we do have an example of how this works with another squadron that we've had for a while. That's Hera and the Ghost. And it specifically says the ones that she gives rogue last until the end of the squadron phase. So... This one does not. So you can lose Rogue. The Rogue basically turns on and off based on activation order. So it's very important, at least the way I'm going to, again, the way I'm going to be playing it, and the way I'm going to be ruling it in my local tournament, that this is how it's meant to be done. You can lose Rogue if you're not at distance one, or if you suddenly engage yourself, you suddenly lose Rogue. So it's, uh, activation order and timing is going to be very important with making Max Chick work properly. So just keep that in mind. Now let's talk about Anakin. Anakin's great. He gets to break a rule, but I think he only is breaking one rule, not two. And let's talk about it. Um, so, 29 points, which I think is a steal for what he does, even with the way that I'm going to rule how he works. While a friendly ship performs a salvo attack, it may add one dice to its attack pool of a color already in its attack pool. This is great. And... You know, certain commanders and abilities let you break rules. They specific when they specifically say they're letting you break a rule. This is specifically saying you're breaking a rule. You can never add a dice to a salvo attack unless you have Anakin as a commander. Now, this specifically says you can, which is awesome. Um, I think it's it's really neat. I think it's great. Um, it's a unique ability, and just that on its own would be amazing. Now, the second part is also really cool. Which make which I think some people are like it will make some OP, but I don't think so. And I'll get to that here in a second. So it's once per activation, after a friendly ship performs an attack that targets an enemy ship, that friendly ship may spend a salvo defense token. If it does, it may perform a salvo attack targeting the same enemy ship. So <clears throat> excuse me. Um 
many people are thinking, so this is basically letting you do a double tap from the same hole zone, which normally you can only do if you have gunnery teams or the advanced gunnery um, mission. Uh, so basically, or whatever, and then you can do spend my salvo, hit him again with a salvo attack, and you can add a dice to this because of Anakin's ability. So a uh, four dice salvo attack from a venator if you're at close range. What I don't think this, and this is what I'm going to roll, this does not let you do three attacks. Um, because Salvo is considered an attack. That's one thing I, it's very important for people to understand. I think people get confused. A Salvo attack is still an attack. It's considered an attack. It goes to the exact same steps of an attack phase. Um, or an attack sequence. This does, and this is specifically doesn't say, like, in addition to your two attack minimum, or it basically, it's not saying anything that's letting you break the rule of only two attacks per activation for a ship, or three if you're a huge ship. So, I'm going to be ruling this, you don't get three attacks with this, because rules as written, the way that I'm interpreting them right now, and again, if we get clarified, obviously I'll change this, it's not letting this is not letting you break that rule because it's not specifically saying you can break it. Unlike his first part of his card, which is specifically letting you break the salvo add dice rule, it specifically says it. The second part doesn't say anything about um, giving you a third attack. It just says that you can spend a salvo to then do an attack targeting the same enemy ship. And salvo is considered an attack. Just gotta keep that in mind. Rules, you know, I, I double check just to make sure specifically state ships only get two attacks per activation. That's it. Um, the exception then is huge ships. And anyway, I've I've waxed on this enough. You guys, I think you guys understand where I'm coming from on this. And until I hear otherwise officially from AMG or if uh, Derek Karnak rules differently, I know he's not official, but in my mind he is. He's you know I've. I've Considered him the rules guru since before AMG took over. Um, but anyway, it's the way that I'm going to be ruling it for the games that I play in and for the games that I TO for our local tournaments. The salvo counts as your second attack. You will not get a third attack. So if you have a ship double arced, it's not worth doing this. But if you have a ship in one arc, just single arc, um, this basically is kind of giving you a minimized gunnery team. So that's how I think this is, needs to be interpreted. It's basically letting you do gunnery team, but at a reduced effect with your salvo armament as opposed to your whatever the arc was you're shooting at a second time. So that's the way I'm ruling it. That's the way I'm interpreting it. So for the, those folks in the local area that'll be playing in our Ozark Mountain Tournament series, that's the way Anakin's going to work. It's not going to give you three attacks. So that's my official ruling for now. All right. You guys know I love the Empire. Um, it's my favorite faction. But this is a bit ridiculous. <laughs> Let's be honest. Out of all... I mean... I mean, for heaven's sakes. I think... I just... Again, it's... At Atomic Mass Games, I think... I, I just don't know... If, no, but people, if they hate the Separatists and other factions, and they just are Empire fanboys like me, but... Ugh, anyway, the Empire... These are great. They're fantastic. Let's talk about Governor Price, which is just nuts. For seven points, and I will say only seven points, she should be nine or ten. Like Cheer now or um, Brunson. This is nuts. Once per activation, while performing an attack against an enemy ship, you may spend one shield from the attacking hull zone to change one die face to any result. And no restrictions on that. My god. <laughs> and I know, you know, I have my opinions on onagers, which is not the, you know, and people have their opinions on onagers that are different. But I even recognize this is just going to make it stupid. Um, granted, they'll have to decide between Intel Officer and this, but this is guaranteeing your accuracy to kill small ships at long range to stop the evade or scatters, stop a brace on a big ship. Basically, I mean, that's why I see this used a lot is guaranteeing an accuracy to to stop key defenses. Or if you have too many accuracies, put it on the double on the red 
Um, I mean, on Star Destroyers, my goodness, this is, or no, I mean, SSDs. <laughs> I mean, I, gun burn price is going to be an auto take now, I think, on SSDs. There's so many officer slots. They have so many shields anyway. Um, <laughs> just to get that last bit of damage or get, again, I think accuracies are going to be the key thing that she's going to be used for. Which is huge, getting the, your guaranteed actually not having to get eight, spend H9, a triple laser slot for H9s. Uh, anyway, I think, my personal opinion, I mean, this is straightforward. There's no cut rules clarifications needed for this. She's amazing. Um, and I think 7 is just too cheap. She needs to be 10 points. She needs to be like, because Chair now is 10 points and doesn't need to be 10 points. Or, or 9 like Brunson. Um, yeah. Anyway, we're going to be seeing price a lot, guys. This is not a, uh, man, what am I going to do? That She's going to be in a lot of lists everywhere for Imperials. Um, so many ships. And this is just going to make um, Onagers more oppressive. Um, it's going to make SSDs nuts. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Anyway, Governor Price is, yeah. I mean, I'll be use. I'll, I'm going to use her. You, I'm probably going to switch the list I was planning on playing. Um, Rob tomorrow for our 800 point May the 4th game that we're going to be driving May the 4th. Um, spoiler alert, um, 800 points. I am bringing in an executor too. So we're going to be, I'm bringing in a nice big executor um, with um, um, Piet. And uh, yeah, one of my officers is going to be switched out with Governor Price just to try her out. And I think Rob might be switching some of his out maybe to try um, some new stuff. We'll see. We'll see. Um, all right. Now, let's go to Volt Scaris, which again, I think this is amazing. Um, first off, he has a Scatter and an Evade, which is phenomenal, um, for survivability's sake. Counter 4, I mean, I'm already thinking, let's put Hellrunner next to him, Counter 5. Um, granted, during this, and, oh, and his attack dice are like a defender. Amazing! Two blues, two blacks. Um... And 18 points, which I think is great. I think that's a uh, really good cost. Um, could have been made... I mean, I think it's fair since he can't attack during the squadron phase, but let's be honest. Um, I'm, I'm one of those people that runs... When I run squads, I run squad command, so this is not going to affect me at all. And I'm just thinking of an interesting combo with this is that just to force people to attack him is then Volt and... Um, just... Dang, I just thought, hang on. <laughs> I just had my mind just went blank. You know what I'm talking about, where you can't attack him if someone else is engaged. Um, dang it. Here I thought I was all ready for this filming. Here, we'll leave this in to show my uh, getting old. Valen Rudor. Gosh, I can't put him and Valen next to each other. That way, oops. <laughs> I just covered up my face with that. Um, Valen Rudor, so that and just put them in a squad ball, an enemy squad ball, so they have to attack Volt, um, getting counter four back, and if you, and the, granted, this is going to be three of your four aces, I mean, this will definitely be very gimmicky if you want to play it this way, but Howlrunner, nearby, like, behind, so they can't attack Howlrunner, they have to attack Volt, you're getting counter five back with swarm reroll, um, and you have to kill Volt before you can get anybody else, and this is, and he's got a scatter evade. So I think, uh, yeah, I think he's great. Again, I think I'm going to try to see if I can not switch him out and fit him into the list. I'm going to be playing with Rob tomorrow for an 800 point game to try him out. But um, yeah, overall, I mean, Empire came out as not just the big winners, the absolute freaking huge winners. Just disproportionately. I just feel, ugh. I get, you know, as I talk through. The only one that I think is just complete, it's, it's not good at all, is Asajj. I mean, it's so situational. Everything else, though, even, again, like I was talking about Watt, I think it's interesting. I might try a list at some point with Watt, surrounded by Vulture Droid, basically a squad-heavy Separatist game, or a Separatist fleet, where I have my Hyenas can go out to do bombing ones, where Watt and Vulture Droids lock down the enemy fighters, and, uh... <coughs> Be if the dodge three helps the survivability. So, I think he's. But anyway, Anakin. I think and I think is great. Even though again, I'm. I don't think he gives you three attacks, and that's why I'm rolling it. He's still great even without that. It still can be fantastic. 
Like, say you didn't get the double arc you need, you got a good hit, just needs a little bit more to take out the ship you're shooting at, we'll just spend the salvo and hit him with a salvo attack with an added dice um, to finish it off. So, Anakin is still great. And that's your whole fleet. So, um, yeah, I think Anakin is great. I think Draven could be useful. Again, situational. I don't think he's bad. I don't think he's great. I think he's good. Could be fun. Matchstick, again, the order is going to matter. <clears> hey, <throat> to close attention to your activation and timing orders with Matchstick to make him work properly. And then Fen Rao. Um, again, people might think I'm wrong on this, but this is the way I'm rolling it. It does not give you additional squadron activations because it does not say that. It just says that you get to activate those two non-unique squads as if they were chosen by the same squad command, which means you have to still have squadron activation numbers. Um, you know what I mean. So you need to have at least a squadron activation of three to make this work, get his special ability to go off effectively. So, all right. Well, let me know what you guys think about my rulings <laughs> and my interpretations of these rules. And um, yeah, I'm, you know, uh, at least we, you know, it's one of those where at least we got something. Again, this is bare minimum. You know, I have my thoughts on AMG. I've made them known in the past. Um, I hope I am proven wrong as time goes on in the future and things get better. We'll see. Um, I'm keeping myself nice and neutral when it comes to my thoughts on Armada as far as their support of it. Um, I'm not getting my hopes up, but I'm also not going to be a super Debbie Downer either. We'll just see what happens. Because as far as I'm concerned, I'm going to keep playing our motto, whether they go under or not. And keep organizing tournaments in my area and going to other organized tournaments, whether they do anything with our motto or not. So, I'm glad we have new stuff. This will be some interesting interactions. And I look forward to trying them out. And I look forward to y'all's discussion in the comments about what you think about these cards and how I've ruled on them. So, thank you guys for watching. And until next time, take it easy.